welcome to the Chickadee Knitting Club Knitting Podcast. My name is Caitlin. This is Simka. And this is a podcast where I share what I'm knitting, what I'm crafting, and take you along on my journey to become an occupational therapist. But before we really begin, I am kind of blown away because if you take a peek down there, the Chickadee Knitting Club has over a thousand subscribers, which is so wild to me. I didn't have any like big uh, milestone celebration plans <laughs> or anything, but the timing is pretty interesting because I have finally, after months, maybe even years of planning and preparation, I have an Etsy shop now for the things that I have been knitting. Just about every single shop name that has to do with chickadees and knitting has been taken. Um, so please support the other chickadee knitting Etsy creators out there. But because of that, I had to get a little more creative. And since most of the things that I have sort of worked on and stockpiled for this little Etsy shop are inspired by um, the forest that I live in, it's called Forest Floor Knits. The shop is live. I have a link below and um, I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Okay, on to the knitting. This is gonna be hopefully a shorter episode because I have fewer things in mind that I have finished since the last episode. But that is okay because that is kind of my goal for 2022. This new year, I really wanted to be more intentional about taking time to grow in other hobbies and interests. And so I had kind of made it my New Year's resolution to knit less and do other crafts more. One of those recently was my very first um, darning project. I have this button up that I love wearing all the time and I've had it for years, but unfortunately there was a hole in the elbow that just kept growing and growing. I had plans to knit a patch for it, but decided to darn up the hole and stitch it up so that it wouldn't keep getting bigger once the patch was put on. Because that's something that's happened with another similar elbow hole project. And once I put the patch on, the hole kept tearing. And at this point, it might be unsalvageable. <laughs> but I uh, decided to learn from that and apply it to this project. In the end, I think it turned out really great. It looked so good. And even though it was messy and uneven, once I put it on, all the weaving evened itself out. Honestly, I think it looks so good that I might just scrap my idea to add patches to it because I think it's just really fun. And, uh, moving on to finished objects, I have finished um, both of the little sweaters that I'm knitting for my cousin. The first one was this um, sort of six to nine month size sweater using Tin Can Knits Flax Light sweater pattern. And the 24 month size of the same sweater so that it will be a big sis and little sib um, sort of sweater duo. The yarn is this really lovely teddy bear brown from Cascade Yarns. That is perfect for this project because not only is it soft and a nice neutral color, which is what my cousin requested, but it's machine washable. And as I've already stated here before, if you're gonna gift a baby sweater, make sure that it is well prepared to get dirty. And I've called these um, finished objects, but um, they're not quite done yet. I still have to weave in all of the ends and sort of um, stitch up all the armpit holes because I still haven't figured out how to <laughs> knit a sweater, um, top down sweater without just gaping holes under the arms but I um, will also be embroidering um, something on the front in a little lighter contrast color, but that is gonna be between me and my cousin. I have found an excellent, excellent personal project for the uh, Chickadee um, by Quince & Co yarns that I had acquired at the beginning of the year, and it is the Current Mood Shawl by uh, Graffiti Knits. I first heard about this pattern from, 
I think her name is Kirsten Lehrer. I'm not sure what her knitting podcast or vlog is called, um, but I will link her um, because she had um, shared that it was a uh, potato chippy kind of pattern where it's just one more row after another. And I have to agree, it has been really, really fun to knit. And part of that might be because it's the first personal project that I'm knitting for myself in quite a while. But also just because it's this really fun um, mix of color work and ripple stitch and brioche and it's diagonal and I love diagonal shawls. But I will say I have had to frog this shawl at least 12 times. I lost track after seven, so. I'll, um, I'll just show it to you before I talk about all the things that have gone wrong with it. Um, but here it is. This is uh, the bottom edge, and here is the fun little combo of brioche and um, sort of a ripple stitch. There's some um, solid color stuff. There's some color work. Um, it was, it's, it's lovely. It's squishy. It's a beautiful color combination and it should be something that I am happy about but I'm not. I am currently using the Chickadee Yarn by Quince & Co um, that I mentioned in a previous episode in the colors um, Clay and Sedum as well as the Merry-Go-Round of Life yarn from Little Big Yarn Co in the Howl's Moving Castle portion of her um, Ghibli Yarn Club from this previous year. And I don't want to throw graffiti knits under the bus, um, and I think it's mostly just because I mixed up um, when she would say main row and contrast row or main side and contrast side. I thought it, she was talking about the main color and the contrast color, and um, it got really wacky, but it also was really beautiful. So what I mean by mixing up the side and the color and stuff, I'm talking about this first um, ripple stitch border that is just in one color, or at least it's supposed to be. And I can even, just looking at the stitches, tell that, okay, this is correct. It looks correct. This is what proper knitting looks like. But I had done it back and forth in this really weird way because I thought that she was talking about using two colors at once, but not like knit down and back, do the next color, knit down and back. I thought it was, I don't even, I can't even describe my thought process. I don't even know what I was thinking. <laughs> but it ended up being um, the ripple stitch, but also with all these additional ridges and colors and this interesting texture and it was so beautiful and I'm so sad that I didn't get a picture of it. But when I frogged back and started to read the pattern properly and knit it properly, I was actually kind of sad that it looked so plain compared to the beautiful mistake that I had made. So I'm thinking that once I finish this project and knit up a whole shawl just in my awkward messed up conglomeration that I had accidentally stumbled upon because it was truly something to behold. Not only have I had to frog it so many times because either I misread the pattern, um, most of the time it was because I misread the pattern, um, my needle that I was using for it is cheap and it broke and split so that I can't work with it anymore. And out of sheer frustration at um, having to frog it again, I have um, decided to uh, put it on hold for the foreseeable future and start a new project. Despite um, wanting to knit less this year, I have a very healthy long list of projects that I also want to get done. And the one that I decided to go with was um, kind of out of convenience because it's for my brother. And my brother is home this week uh, on spring break. So no better time to knit him a pair of socks than now when I have his feet 
readily available. Um, so this is what I've got so far. It's uh, a toe and it's not in any particular pattern. It's just the toe construction that I prefer and I've really knit um, the vast majority of my socks on, including um, this pair, which is uh, my favorite pair that I ever knit myself. If you are interested in my holy grail, sort of Franken socks, as I call them, because I've kind of taken bits and pieces from a lot of different methods, uh, let me know. But that is sort of the way that I'm going to be knitting my brother's socks. The yarn that I am using is also from Little Big Yarn Co's Studio Ghibli Club from the previous year. It is the smaller, more solid color from the Legend of Ashitaka set, um, representing the movie Princess Mononoke. The color is, it's not exactly a solid green, um, but I hope that in my kind of nighttime light, you can tell that it has lots of different um, shades of green, mostly in like sage, and mossy shades, which is really fitting because um, most of the movie Princess Mononoke takes place inside of a forest and uh, most of the themes in the movie involve the balance and the relationship between humanity and nature. And so I think that is very fitting. And it's also fitting because it's my brother's favorite Studio Ghibli movie. So I wanted to save this set of yarn for him and um, it was really validating to cast on experimentally. I didn't know like have any precise measurements or hadn't really made a gauge or anything. I just cast on like 56 stitches, did my increases as I usually do, and uh, plunked it on his foot um, to see if it would fit and it fit beautifully. Which is so encouraging after such a discouraging um, other project. So this is what I'm going to be working on and um, I don't really know how it's going to end. I've talked with my brother and shown him pictures of other socks that um, just to give him kind of an idea for what he would be interested in and he really likes stripes so I think I'm going to do a mixture of stripes between um, this more like solid color and the color changing yarn that was paired with this one. And just for reference, this is the rest of the Legend of Ashitaka yarn. And I do believe that with Little Big Yarn Co.'s most recent shop update, you can get yourself a mini skein of this, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but go check her yarn out because it is phenomenal. And I'll also be adding some, uh, some texture with a kind of um, mountain diamond looking stitch design that I found a while back. So I'm excited to see how these pan out. But that's it for my knitting and crafting portion. So next up is my occupational therapy journey. Where to begin? I started my second clinical rotation in a school district, which is a really distinct form of occupational therapy because instead of other pediatric uh, OT that focuses a lot on like sensory integration or feeding. It's very specifically meant to be focused on a child's academic goals. So everything that me and my clinical instructor and the other OTs in the district are doing are directly related to how a kid is doing in school and what sort of supports they need to be successful in school. I just finished my fifth, fifth week of my rotation, and I um, more or less have a full caseload. The vast majority of the sessions that my clinical instructor and I had scheduled were led entirely by me and then documented entirely by me. Um, there were a handful that uh, I mostly observed on, but other than that, I am kind of doing a lot of the things that a full-fledged occupational therapist would be doing. I still have a lot of room to grow, which is kind of annoying because I had just finished up my previous rotation 
essentially being a fully independent occupational therapist, showing up to work in the morning, seeing my patient list, deciding what interventions they need, each person needed, and then doing it, documenting, doing evaluations, documenting that, um, seeing if there was anyone that needed afternoon sessions or if there were any, you know, all, all that stuff. Um, and I was making all these decisions on my own and I got to be smart and confident in my decisions and help people and get to be with people. And I really came into my own in a really cool way. And I felt that um, like those last few weeks in particular, I was the most me that I have been in a very long time. It was like discovering a whole new side of myself that um, was always there, but was just kind of waiting for the right moment to shine through. And then I had to go back to square one uh, when I started my new rotation. I don't know where I'm going with that, but that's where I'm at right now. I'm still learning. I have grown a lot in a really short amount of time, but I still have room to grow. And I have just been reminding myself to be patient that I didn't become the um, sparkling phenomenal <laughs> uh, OT that I was at the end of my first rotation until like after two solid months of really hard work. So I'm just taking it as it comes. Mm, I could go on and on um, about that, but this uh, I'm sure this podcast is getting long enough and um, yeah. That's it for uh, today. Thank you so much for watching from both me and Simka. And I hope that you are having a wonderful, wonderful week. And I will see you again soon. Bye. I could just sit here and smile while he does that all day.